Let's apply Fermat's principle to see what happens with reflection. So Fermat's reflection. So we know the law of reflection is that the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection, and we are going to see if he really finds that that is true. So we have some light, and it's going to go from point A to point B, say like that. Point A is, and both points are above this mirror that it's reflecting off of. Right? So we've got a reflecting mirror down here. The light's going to stay in the air above the mirror. It's going to reflect at the mirror, but at what angle? So we're going to imagine point A is at a height little a, and point B is at a height little b. And really the question is, where does it reflect? That would define the angle. So let me draw one possibility is that it reflects here. The light might do that. And now we also have one more coordinate system to think about is we have the height here. So we want to think of an x-axis here where this is zero. We'll just think of the surface as an x-axis. And uh, this distance is uh, c. So the width between the two points is c. And we're reflecting at some point x. Okay? And the idea is to get the light from here to here, it could reflect anywhere on the surface. And we're just asking ourselves, where does it happen to reflect? Because as you can see, as we change where it reflects, that's going to change the angles. So if I draw a normal here, you have the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection like that. OK, well, if it's going to take the least time, let's calculate the time. So what we really care about is delta t from a to b. Uh, let's see. Well, uh, let's see. That's going to be from a to this point, which we probably need to give it a name so it's easier to keep up with. So from a to c and from c to b. But if we want the time, we divide those distances by the speed. So we could call this ac. You know, in geometry, when you write the two points, that's the that segment uh, over the speed. And I'm going to put v as the speed because if I use a little c, we've already used c twice. So let's not call it the speed of light for now. So that's uh, delta b from a to c. And then it's also got to go from c to b, also at the same speed, v. Okay. Now, that's fine, but we want to express this in terms of x. right? So we're going to say that delta t is, let's see, this distance in terms of things we know and things we're figuring out. It's a right triangle here. There's the right triangle like that. And this distance is x, and this distance is a. So it's the square root of a squared plus x squared. The square root of a squared plus x squared Pythagorean theorem is that distance over the velocity. All right. And here is another right triangle between what's left of c. So we brought it over x, and the whole distance was c. So that would be c minus x on one axis and b on the other axis. So the square root of b squared plus c minus x squared over v. There we go. All right, so that's the time. Now, Fermat said that it would go in the least time. So what we need to do is minimize delta t. Find the minimum. And the way you do that is you take the derivative uh, with respect to that position. We're saying when we take it all these different places it could reflect, which one has the minimum time? This will find an extremum, but uh, we're going to assume it's the minimum. OK, so what's this derivative? Well, this is a, that's a squared plus x squared to the 1 half. So you bring down the 1 half, and then it's a squared plus x squared to the minus 1 half, which you can write just as the square root in the denominator. So that's a squared plus x squared. And then you've got to multiply by 2x yeah. uh, here in the top, because that's the derivative of x within the square root, like that. OK, so that's the derivative of that part. And then this one also is a 1 half in the bottom, and that thing to the minus 1 half, which means that thing in the bottom, c minus x squared. 
and that leaves a 2 c minus x in the top, and then that minus the derivative of that makes this whole thing minus like that. Right? And then that has to be equal to 0, since we're looking for a minimum or a maximum. All right, and let's see what we do now. Well, we can cancel some 2s. I can do that part. And we can now look and now write it uh, in terms of angles, because look, we have x over the square root of a squared plus x squared. So here we have x, this side of the, si of the triangle, and we have the hypotenuse. So we actually know we're getting the sine of this angle. If this is theta incident, then you know, this is also theta incident from something I learned in the seventh grade. And then the sine of that is opposite over hypotenuse. So x over the square root of x squared plus a squared. So this is actually equal to the sine of theta incident. And then this other one, maybe you can see where we're headed here. This one is equal to um, c minus x, which is this part of, um, uh, actually we want this triangle here. Right, so there's theta reflect. So there's c minus uh, x over here, and then there is the square root of b squared plus c minus x quantity squared. Right, so again, we have a sine. Right? So minus the sine of theta r, and those equal 0. And one way that's true is theta i equals theta r. So you can see that one way to think about it, one way to get the law of reflection is to say that when it comes in that angle of incidence equals angle of reflection, that's actually the shortest path. Right? The shortest path will get you there in the shortest time. This is geometrical optics. It doesn't really explain light. Some people at the time, their reason was the wisdom of God. You know, let's leave God out of this. We know the real reason. We already did it when we talked about electromagnetism. But um, again, it's just geometry. But you'll be surprised how much optics you can do with just geometry. So we'll keep going.